Hello and welcome all of you to Math 2050 uh, Applied Linear Algebra. Um, I think we'll start off by talking about just what is linear algebra. Um, you actually are familiar with it somewhat. Um, you've had courses in algebra, I'm sure. Um, in general, what we think of in particular for this course is that uh, linear algebra is a study of systems of linear equations. So that begs the question, what's a linear equation? Well, a linear equation is one of this form, um, a1x1 plus a2x2 plus dot 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 anxn equals b. And here, uh, the x's are the variables. Uh, the a's are called coefficients. And b is uh, the right-hand side value. Here, uh, the all the A's and B are typically real numbers and uh, um, then you ask well what's a real number? Uh, well a real number um, is uh, basically you can think of that as any number that you can find on a number line so that includes uh, integers, um, rational numbers, irrational numbers, um, negative numbers, positive numbers, zero, um, just about any number um, or any number you can find on a number line, it's a real number. This is, is as opposed to complex or imaginary numbers. Yeah, those would not be real numbers. So for our purposes, we'll uh, not be dealing with complex numbers. We'll stick to just real numbers. Uh, in, in our equations, uh, the, the linear part means uh, that we don't allow nonlinear uh, expressions of the variables. So terms like x1 squared or x1 times x2, uh, those type terms are nonlinear and so we don't allow those uh, type expressions. So here's a couple of sample linear equations. Um, you know, those are uh, just typical. Um, first one has two variables here. Here's one with three variables. Um, this one, uh, first one, you'll recognize it's got two variables, so that just defines a line in the plane, uh, in the, the x-y plane uh, here. Got three variables, so that actually defines a, uh, a plane in three dimensions. So we'll talk more about that as we go along. Um, so we're back to um, uh, what is linear algebra. So we've talked about what's a linear equation. Um, and uh, linear algebra is study of systems of linear equations. So what's a system? Uh, that just means you have multiple equations. So for example, uh, let's go to the drawing board. Here's a system of two equations in uh, two unknowns. And uh, all of you have had uh, college algebra, so you're familiar with a system of this form and uh, you probably learned a couple of different ways to solve this system uh, when you were in algebra. And so we're just going to talk about that first off here. Um, if I asked you how would you solve this system, uh, then you might say, well, I'd use substitution, because that seems uh, like a, a, a way to go. If you look here, You've got uh, the x2 term. You can solve this equation for x2, so let's do that. So from this equation, I can get x2 equals 28 minus 4x1. And then I substitute this expression for x2 back into the first equation. So that gives me 2x1 plus 3 times this stuff here, 28 minus 4x1 and that equals 24. So then I just simplify 2x1 plus uh, 3 times 28 is 84 minus 12x1 equals 24. So that gives me a looks like negative 10x1 equals 24 minus 84 would be negative 60. So it looks like x1 is equal to 6. And then if x1 is 6, we can go back and plug in here to figure out what x2 is. So x2 is going to be 28 minus 4 
times 6. So x2 is equal to uh, 4. So, oops, back up here. So x, oh, do it again. x, there we go, x2 equals 4, x1 equals 6 uh, is our solution. So that's one way to solve this system. Uh, that's using the method of substitution. Um, another method uh, that's sometimes used is uh, to um, go back and look at the system and try to eliminate one of the variables uh, by multiplying uh, one of the equations or maybe even both the equations by uh, a constant and then adding or subtracting one from the other. So um, I'm going to try that method here. So I'm going to multiply this first equation by negative 2. Okay, and I'll just write what I get down here. So negative 2 times 2x1 gives me negative 4x1. And then negative 6x2. And then negative 2 times 24 would be negative 48. And then if I add these two together, these two that I have here, then notice that the x1s cancel out. So they're gone. I've eliminated x1. And here, if I add, I get negative 5x2 equals uh, negative 20. So that says x2 equals 4. And then to get x1, I could substitute that back into either of these equations. And we already know that x1 is 6, so I won't go through that process. Okay, so there we go. We have our solution and that's using uh, the method of elimination. Okay, you systematically eliminate variables. Um, so those are the two methods um, that uh, you probably learned back in um, algebra class for solving the system. Um, let's take a look at um, what we're doing uh, graphically. Let's take a graphical look at it. So I go back to my uh, equations and I draw them on a graph. Let's see if I can come over here and I'll try to do this. Let's see. All right. So if I graph my equations, where this is going to be my x1 axis, this will be my x2 axis. And let's see, if I look at the first equation, if x1 is 0, uh, well actually I'm going to start with this one because uh, if x1 is 0 here, then x2 is 28. So that gets us way up here. So there's 28. So I've got one point right there at 0, 28. Uh, then if x2 is 0, we get x1 equals 7. So I'm going to scoot this over just a little bit to give me a little more room here. Let me clean this out. Okay, so it looks like, let me, I want to try to get my scale uh, as best I can. So it looks like this would be about 7. And so my other point is here at 7, 0. So I've got one line comes like this. Let me see if I can do a better job drawing that. Apparently I'm not going to get a little better angle on that with my computer here. Okay, well that's not very good either. Let's try one more time. Looks like I am not going to be able to make this work. Let's see one more time. Okay, I'm going to just call that good. Let's call this 7 right here. Alright, so then let's do, let's look at the other one. The other equation is, uh, I've got uh, uh, this one. If x1 is 0, it looks like x2 is 8. So that's going to be along about right there. And uh, if x2 is 0, looks like x1 is 12. So that's going to be 
somewhere along about right here. I'm going to try once again, see if I can make a line. Oh, that one's not terrible there. All right, so, um, so this is about seven right there. Let's take that away. All right, so if we look, my scale is better, be better to see, but along about there, that's the point where those lines intersect. And so that's the point six, four. So my scale was better, it would look better, but you get the general idea. So what we're looking at here is we've got, we're, we've got this system and we want to find x1 and x2 that satisfy both those equations. So since each of those equations represents a line, then when we're looking for uh, a point that satisfies both, then that means it's a point that's on both lines. So that's the point where the lines intersect. Okay, so in this example, um, we ended up with a unique solution. All right, a unique solution. That means exactly one solution. Okay, now let's think. Are there any other possibilities? All, are, no matter what your system is, you're always going to have exactly one solution. I think you know that that is not the case. Um, so what are the possibilities? If you don't have exactly one solution, um, how about do you have a solution every time? And uh, you probably know that the answer is no. And uh, that happens when you have a situation like this. There's one line, there's another, they're parallel, and so they never intersect. And so this case, you have no solution. No solution in that case. Okay, so we've got, uh, you have zero solutions, you have one solution, how about two? Can you, end up, can you come up with a system where you have two solutions? Let's think on that two solutions. Now in, in my class one day um, I, I had somebody say, well what if you drew another line here? So you had a line like this. Right? Then you got they intersect there, they intersect there, so there's two solutions, right? And uh, the answer is well no because here you've got three lines and so if you were trying to solve a system with these three lines then that means that you you need to find a point where all three intersect at the same time. So uh, in this case, there's still no solution because there's no point at which all three lines intersect. Um, I've also had students say, well, hey, what if you had a parabola? So you had a case like this. You know, there's a parabola, you got a line going through it. Look, there they intersect right there, intersect right there, so you got two solutions. Um, now this is uh, legitimate because you get two two functions and they intersect uh, at these two places. Problem is that this parabola is not a linear function, right? The parabola is a quadratic, right? Not linear. So that case doesn't work either. Um, so it turns out that um, if uh, you don't, if you have a system of linear equations and uh, you uh, don't have no solution, you don't have exactly one solution, then you must have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so infinite number of solutions. Okay, and uh, in two dimensions, that's a little bit uh, tough to come up with a good example. The best you can do is two dimensions it is like one like this, where you have something like uh, 2x1 plus 3x2 equals 10, and then maybe 4x1 plus 6x2 equals 20. Now on the surface, it looks like, yeah, you got two, you got a system of equations, you got two equations. Um, but when you go to graph this, what do you find? Well, you find that this is actually the same equation because I wrote it so that the second one was just a multiple of the first. So when you draw it, if you were drawing the graph, whatever it might look like, 
you graph one of the lines and then you graph the other one and it sits right on top of the first one. So that in that case any point on the line would be a solution and so there would be an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so um, just to recap, let's go back uh, to our slide. Let's go to the next one. Um, so these are your possibilities. A system of uh, equations has either no solution, uh, exactly one solution, which in which case we say it's a unique solution, or it has an infinite number of solutions. And uh, a little more terminology for you. We say a system is consistent. Okay, consistent's a word we'll use a lot. So a uh, system is consistent if it has at least one solution. So that means either unique or an infinite number, but it has at least one solution. It's consistent. Um, otherwise, we say it's inconsistent. So inconsistent means that uh, it has no solution at all. Okay, so um, I think uh, we'll stop there for this one and we'll pick up with this uh, on the next uh, video.